We're going to continue reading from No Fixed Address. And um, what I'd like you to do is continue what we did last week is to draw what you hear or take notes on what you hear. Um, and then after I finish reading, I want you to write a short paragraph on what you think is going to happen next. Okay, let's get started with the reading, page 55. <clears throat> I went to Dylan's house after school the next day, even though I was pretty pooped. After we'd found a new place to park the van, it had taken me a long time to unwind. I had to list all the United States in alphabetical order in my head from Alabama to Wyoming and go through, go through the entire periodic elements before I'd finally drifted off to sleep. Still, I was excited as we walked five blocks to his house. It had been a long time, I mean a long time, since I had been to a friend's place, since at my last couple of schools I had been lacking the key ingredient, that is, friends. The Brinkerhoff's home was exactly as I remembered it. The porch still looked like, a, like a, it was caving in, the neon yellow paint was peeling, the grass was brown and patchy. There were old children's toys in the lawn, even though Dylan, the youngest, hadn't played with them in years. Inside, you could barely see the hardwood floors for the discarded shoes, socks, sweaters, and books. They had dust bunnies that were bigger than Horatio. When I went into the kitchen, there was a stack of dishes piled high in the sink that looked identical to the stack that had been there years earlier. My socks stuck a little bit to some spots on the floor, just like they had before. It was wonderful, so full of life. An enormous orange cat waddled into the kitchen and rubbed against Dylan's legs. This is Craig, Dylan said as he scooped him up. He's two, we got him last year. He held the cat out to me and I took him. Craig purled, purred happily in my arms. Whoa, he must be 20 pounds, 21. <clears throat> Dylan's older sister, Alberta, walked in. She looked the same, too, with her long brown hair, lazy eye, and unique t-shirt collection. This one read, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, except bears. Bears will kill you. Oh, how sweet. Dylan's already made an, an ickle friend. She took the milk out of the fridge and drank straight from the carton. Wait a second. I'd recognize that hair anyway. You're bionicle dork. I blushed a little. That's me, but I prefer to be called Felix. You guys used to run around in your Toy Story pajamas with your bionicles making laser gun sounds. Pum, pum, pum. Ha 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 Her laugh hadn't changed either. You're adorable. Total nerd bots. She gave us both a once over. Clearly some things haven't changed. Ha 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 ha. He 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 ha. Then she poured us, a, poured us both a glass of milk from the cart and she drank from, from. It was heaven. You know how sometimes you don't realize how much you've missed something until you get it back? That's how I felt about having a friend again. It was like having blurry vision for a long time and then someone giving you a pair of glasses and you look at the world and you go, wow, this is what I've been missing? I went to Dylan's house almost every day for those first two weeks. He never asked to come to mine. His place was close to school. It just made sense. We did our homework. He caught up me up on all things Bernard. Just yesterday, okay? I left out Settler's Catan on the coffee table because me and Alberta were mid-game. I was winning. And this morning, all the pieces were moved around to make it s like she was winning. And I was like, Bernard, you sneaky rascal. We also ate a lot. Their cupboards were full of jumbo-sized items from Costco. We need pizza pops and burritos and stuffed our faces in front of the TV. Since I've been eating most of the food out of cans for months, this was seriously the best. <clears throat> One afternoon, we caught a rerun of who, what, where, when. What iconic American novel includes the character Becky Thatcher? I asked Horatio, Bla asked Horatio Blass. The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, I shouted, at full three seconds before the, any of the contestants buzzed in. Wasn't that the name of Hitler's dog? dog? What was the name of Hitler's dog? Blondie, who was the Greek god of wine, Dionysus. At some point, I realized that Alberta, who'd wandered in from the kitchen, and Dylan were staring at me. Wow, egghead, said Alberta. Dylan threw a cushion at her. You're good, Felix, really good. Better than even than my boyfriend, Henry, said Alberta. And he's on the senior reach for the top team at our high school. 
Alberta was on the junior team, but she was too dumb to make the senior, Dylan explained. Alberta threw a cushion back at him and left the room. You should apply to be a contestant, said Dylan. I can't. You have to be at least 18. Craig hopped onto the couch and crawled up on his back between us, sprawled on his back between us, purring loudly. That's too bad. Too bad. You could totally win. I doubt that, that I said, but thanks. I always left before Dylan's parents came home. I liked the brinker offs, but I didn't want to have to answer any questions about mom and where we lived and maybe have to lie. Unlike some people I know, I am a terrible liar. Astrid's job was going well. Sometimes we would walk all the way to the shop after I left Dylan's and stay until her shift ended. She would slip me a free hot chocolate and if it wasn't busy, she'd have simple conversations with me in French. This was helpful since we had to speak French in class all the time now. It was hard for everyone, except Winnie Wu. Near the end of the second week, Monsieur Thibault broke us into pairs and assigned us each a picture book. We had to write a short paragraph about it in French. Felix, you'll be working with Winnie. I almost groaned out loud. Winnie Wu was a royal pain in the derriere, to use a French word. She just couldn't stop talking or asking questions about everything. Sir, have you eaten escargot? I tried them in Las Vegas, Paris. Sir, will we not also learn about the pas simple at some point? Sir, who decided which words would be feminine, la, and which words would be masculine, le? She couldn't let the smallest thing go by without having something to say about it. All in a rationally good self-taught French. My POO told me she even got on Monsieur Thibault's nerves sometimes when she asked her 18th question of the day. I'd see him exhale, inhale deeply and hold his breath for a few seconds, then exhale slowly. And now I had to work with her. Dylan grinned wickedly at me, showing off his hardware. Good luck, sucker, he mouthed. I sat across from Winnie. She was wearing a different blouse with a different plaid skirt and beret was green. I also noticed she had incredible posture. Straight white teeth, naturally red lips, which never stopped moving. We need to dig below the surface, she said. We needed to, to discuss the deeper implications faced by Walter and his owners as he goes through this particular plight. Are there, for example, some weightier things at work that we haven't yet uncovered? Oh my God, I blurred out in English. He's a farting dog. The book was assigned was Walter Le Chien qui, qui pepe, pete. Felix, en français, s'il vous plaît, Monsieur Thibault said. Our paragraph had become two pages, single space. At least we got an A. But I told Dylan I would never, ever work with Winnie Wu again. I made that bow on a Friday, and it broke the following Monday. The school newspaper is looking for volunteers to write a few pages of the September edition in French, Monsieur Thibault announced on Monday at the beginning of our third week. It's published once a month. There's no extra credit, but it's a good way to work on your language skills. Anyone who's interested will have our first meeting after school in room 222. I think we should try it out, Dylan said later in the cafeteria. He was eating a ham sandwich. His braces caught on a lot of it, enough for an afternoon snack. Me too, I replied. You remember that magazine we wrote when we were kids, Stories from Uranus? You wrote an article about aliens probed my butt. You wrote an article called Martian Steals All My Family's Underpants. We cracked up. Dylan sprayed a bit of a sandwich on me in the process. I didn't mind. What's a bit of mashed, masticated, macerated food in between friends? After school, we made our room to 222. Monsieur Thibault was there with the editor of the paper, an eighth grader who introduced, introduced himself as Charlie Tune. Looks like you two are the only ones coming, said Monsieur Thibault, so I guess we'll get started. Thanks for being here, Charlie began, just as the door opened and the latecomer arrived. Winnie. She looked flustered. Her red beret was all askew. Sorry, Emily, she said. Donald thought it would be funny to steal my beret and use it as a frisbee. Donald was a kid in our class, and he seemed to be kind of a jerk. Winnie took the seat in front of me as Charlie continued. We want a French component to the paper, mostly for you guys in immersion, but also for the rest of the students who currently are doing French and want to practice their language skills. You can write about pretty much anything. We just need to fill content enough to fill three pages. Winnie raised her hand. Yes, 
said Charlie. That won't be a problem, not for me anyway. Her red lips curled into tiny smug grin. grin. Dylan and I looked at each other and fake fake barfed. Okay, well, there's a bunch of bunch for the first issue, so if you could just do stuff to me by Monday the 13th. Winnie raised her hand again. Yes? I'm assuming you want hard-hitting stories about politics, poverty, drugs. Well, it's a school newspaper. It's meant to be pretty light and entertaining. Winnie's hand shot up again. You really don't need to keep raising your hand. In other words, you want fluff, she said, and she pursed her lips in disapproval. Monsieur Thibault inhaled deeply. He exhaled slowly. Hey, write whatever you want, said Charlie. I don't care. I just need it by the 13th. Meeting adjourned. Charlie and Monsieur Thibault hightailed it out of the room. Let's go to my house, Dylan said to me as we stood. Keep noodling ideas. Winnie turned to look at, look at us. Excellent plan. Dylan and I shot at each other a look that said, Crap, Winnie must have seen because her bottle lips started trembling. Oh, I get it. You didn't mean me. There was a long pause. You can come if you want, said Dylan with zero enthusiasm. This is where Winnie was supposed to grab the cue, clue and say, No, it's okay. Instead, her face lit up. Goody, I just want to, I just have to go get my satchel. She hurried out of the room. I looked at Dylan. Goody, satchel? It was going to be a long afternoon. Winnie was just as annoying as we had expected, possibly more so. First, there was her expression when she entered Dylan's house. Perfect red mouth became a little O of horror. She tried to cover. It's so charmant, she said as she fussed over our offer of pizza pops and chips. Empty calories. I should also tell you all the reasons you should eat less meat for the sake of the planet. Please don't, said Dylan. In the living room, she spread her jacket on the couch before she sat down. The couch was covered in cat hair, but still. So, should we go over our, should we toss our, out our ideas, said Dylan? Winnie took out a leather-bound notebook and a pen. I'll keep minutes. I'll keep hours. I'll keep hours, said I, chomping on a pizza pop. I'll keep seconds, said Dylan, shoveling chips into his mouth. Two of the three of us cracked out. I could do a crossword, I said. Maybe a little article of fun French facts, like the French, the stuff French invented for, or moments of history. Great idea, said Dylan. Where's the ed? Where's the journalistic rigor? rigor? Winnie tapped her pencil on her notebook. Hey, I know, said Dylan, ignoring her. I could write about poltergeists. Perfect, I said. Winnie winkled, wrinkled her nose. Why would you do that? Because they're cool and interesting, said Dylan. Because we have one. Please, poltergeists don't exist. How do you know, I asked, feeling defensive on Dylan's behalf. I had my own theories about Bernard, but I knew to keep them to myself. Because any thinking person knows that ghosts aren't real. Dylan started to make sputtering sounds. I pointed to the cross around her neck. Do you believe in God? I do, she said. So how is that different, Dylan asked. Have you seen God? Have you seen a poltergeist? No, but I've seen proof. He plays a ton of practical jokes, but he also looks out for us. Like the other day, my sister slipped on the stairs and this invisible force kept her from falling. Winnie opened her mouth to argue, but stopped herself. Fine, I can tell there's no use arguing with you two. Do your weirdo pseudo journalism. I'm going to write an investigative piece about asbestos. Our school was built a long time ago, meaning there's probably asbestos in the walls. Dylan looked at me. Sounds super, he said. Super boring, I added. Again, two of, out of the three of us cracked up. Okay, I'm going to end there on page 66. So remember, um, now you're going to write a short paragraph of prediction about what you think is going to happen with Dylan and Felix and Winnie. And I'll look forward to reading to you next time. Have a great day.